Thanks for coming out. Um, hopefully, uh, Mo warmed up the mic for me. Um, <laughs> great season. Really proud of everything we've accomplished. Um, can't believe it's been um, a couple weeks since our last game here. Um, you know, we put we put uh, placed some high goals on a team when we uh, broke camp in San Diego. We turned the playoffs, home court win a division. We were able to check all those boxes. Um, fantastic series against San Antonio, kind of the gold standard of NBA franchises. Uh, heartbreaking loss uh, against Portland in seven games, which I thought was the most, you know, far from objective, most entertaining playoff series that I saw. Um, but not, not an ounce of disappointment, more all pride about the season. And um, ask away. Tim. First of all, congratulations for sticking around. Secondly, <laughs> secondly, on top of that, get a compliment. <laughs> We're very happy to see you around here. Um, but at the same time, how good is it to have that continuity staying strong? It's always been a sticking point with you guys, and now that you have that going forward more, what does that do for you guys? Yeah, I think continuity is what we've hung our hat on. Um, there's numerous ways to build a professional sports franchise, and unfortunately, most of those ways don't um, aren't allowed to do so under the guise of patience. And ownership has been unbelievably patient uh, with all of us. And without that patience, we couldn't have this slow build to where we are now. Um, it, it was, you know, we missed the playoffs by one game two consecutive years, and it would have been easy to skip steps and try to get to that, you know, an additional level. But if we had done so, we wouldn't have had that continuity that we have presently. And if we would have skipped steps, I don't think we would have set ourselves up for what I, I hope and fingers crossed is going to be a sustained period of success and, um, and a real special team. The, well, people can say, will say that uh, it's one thing to go from rebuilding to good, it's another <laughs> to go from good to next level, like great. Uh, some would describe that as a little more difficult than actually rebuilding. What do you think, have you thought about what you would do as your next step uh, in building this organization? Has as you even thought about it since the offseason began? Yeah, I think about it every night. I think, um, yeah, I think we're... I guess the narrative, we'd have won one more game, we might have been nearly great. I think, I think uh, there's a lot of uh, talk about a championship team, and I can't say for certain if there's any formula for championship level teams. I think there's a, uh, there's a formula for building championship level fabric and organization and culture. I think if you're a final four team, it's like college, but you have a puncher's chance to win it all. So I, I don't think we're far off from there. In the playoffs, so much about matchups. Um, you know, it, just because you, you won around does not mean you're one of the eight best teams. We have some um, holes we have to fill. We've challenged our guys to come back as a, as a better version of themselves. Um, but I, I don't think there's um, a ton of heavy lifting that needs to be done if we keep challenging ourselves internally. I think we have the best coaches they have in the league. Um, Nicole is a super, superstar and still doesn't act like it, which is fantastic. You know, the team first mentality is what he still embraces. So. Um, but we're always trying to figure out, geez, we just had that, or that, you know, we need to get a little bit better there. And uh, the offseason is a great chance for us to improve upon what we presently have. Tim, I know you take a lot of pride in what you have been a part of building here. Washington, that area is home. Just what went into your decision-making process? You know, I was, first of all, we were, Josh is such a great owner. We had a discussion, um, you know, months and months ago. Um, that if, if they were ever dumb enough to call me, I'd love to have the conversation. So I had a really nice conversation with uh, Mr. Leontes and his staff. Um, he, he's a fantastic owner, a, a real, I think, a, a real visionary. Um, really impressed by um, who he was and his thoughts for the team. So that team's going to be special quickly uh, under his leadership. Um, so we just had a conversation. You know, not much more than that. And um, you know, the continuity again is a, is a byproduct of loyalty and. When Josh hired me, filling you know, some of the biggest shoes in the NBA, uh, we did not get off to a good start by any stretch. You know, a couple of down years, and he doubled down on, on what easily could have been perceived as an initial mistake uh, because he liked the processes and liked kind of how we attacked our job day to day. So, um, you know, loyalty and, and patience, again, is such a rarity in professional sports, and that's here in spades. So, um, those things matter to me. It matters to me that uh, the relationship that I have um, across this whole building, it's not specific to basketball operations. It's, the business people, the ticket sales people have been fantastic. You know, communications there, whatever, but you know, we all have crosses to bear. Um, <laughs> and, um, so it's, it's you know, you, you kind of close your eyes and envision yourself somewhere else, and you look to think about all those relationships, and, and collectively, I couldn't, um, I had a hard time envisioning myself elsewhere. Tim, after that uh, game seven happens, 
do you watch that game again? Do you try to break it down? How long does it take you to kind of move past that and just get on with the off season and look forward to next yeah, season? Yeah, it's the lucky thing was it was Mother's Day, and I told myself prior to the game that I wasn't going to be a, a Grinch after the game, regardless. And it was a beautiful day, the last beautiful day we've had in Denver. <laughs> um, it's it's um, so I would moan I never before we walked out. So whatever happens, it's going to be an awesome year. We're going to celebrate. We're going to beer afterwards. Um, we're either going to be celebrating, we're going to be moaning the fact we lost, but this is not going to be a pity party. We're not going to feel like we didn't accomplish a lot this season. So the game was over. Um, a lot of emotions were shared in the locker room. Um, you know, just pure emotions from our players. Guys apologizing to me, I'm sorry I let you down. And guys who, without them, we wouldn't be here. Um, quickly changed, put a pair of t-shirt, uh, put a t-shirt and a pair of shorts on, I walked over at a great dinner. Um, I had a great Mother's Day, and then uh, my wife fell asleep, and I watched the game, you know, a couple times. <laughs> um, so I achieved both goals. But um, you, you can take losses if they're fueled by as much energy and passion as, as guys can muster. And, you know, we, I don't think we had a loss in the playoffs. We didn't play really, really hard. Um, I don't think we'll go two for nineteen for three again. I think we were exhausted. If you look at the amount of games that we played over a condensed period of time, and, and we were, and to their credit, they made huge plays. And, uh, so there was not an ounce of, um, it was all pride. It was disappointment. And it was, you know, when they played that first game one and Tuesday in, in uh, Oakland, you're thinking that, you know, man, that could have been us. But uh, it was such a great season. And then it won, however it ended in game seven, to feel anything but pride. Tim, how would you categorize your decision? Was it an easy decision to stay or a difficult decision not to go home? Again, it's you know we just had a great conversation with DC. Uh, I really enjoyed it. I wanted, and thankfully the Crunk has allowed me to have an audience with a team that really means a lot to me. You know, I spent 14 years there. Um, certainly, it's where my where I'm from. It's where my wife's from. Um, so I just wanted to have a conversation and I, because I, I I care about the organization. I think uh, Mr. Leonsis is is special, and I think um, I think he cares about not just the team, but he cares about that whole region. And I, I did not know him. You know, I never had an audience with him. So to have that conversation and, and kind of an exchange of ideas, and um, you know, it's, it's flattering to even be in a room with guys like that. Um, you know, that. That's all I wanted to achieve. And it's the again the relationships that have built been built up here, and the hard times we've been through. Um, it, it, I, it was very hard to envision um, leaving something that has been so hard and, and so long coming, and it's built. Tim, since uh, Michael got here, you guys have gone from 33 to 40 to 46 to 54 wins, kind of you know gobbling up big real estate every year. Is it? Are you guys now to level though? Is the next is the next climb going to be the hardest part yet in terms of you know closing that gap among the elite? Uh, can you please identify yourself. We have a different athletic writer the last couple weeks. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> My name's Nick. Uh, <laughs> Nick had uh, had a kid recently. Congrats, first time I've seen you. The person. Um, what, the question was, is it harder to go from 54 and more? Is that essentially right. it? Yeah. Um, yeah, really hard. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think 54 is be some magic number for us. I think um, realistic goals for us is to continue to maintain home court in, in a Western Conference. And at some point, hopefully, some of these guys go east. Um, but I think, um, and I, I don't think you can overreact to specific series or years, but I think we have the core to be you know, <coughs> excuse me, a, a team that can be a top four team and then a top four team um, when you're in the plus, feel pretty good about your home court, at least the first round. And I, I think as long as we, we do that, um, I like our chances. And it's all matched with the playoffs. There's been great teams. I think it's kind of a lazy narrative to say if you didn't win a championship, you're not a champion. Um, I mean, Carl Malone's John Stockton champions. Some of those teams in the conference ran into Michael Jordan for over a decade. They were championship level teams. They never were able to, to, to raise the trophy. So I, I think control we control. I think you're going to see a bunch of young guys come back better. These guys are extremely young. I think we had a couple of guys who were playing through injuries, a couple of guys that during the season uh, had some surgeries. Um, so I think it's safe to assume, and, and maybe it's me being overly optimistic, that we're going to see a better version of us next year. I don't know if that means more wins. I don't know if it means that we're going to have a riveting playoff series and, and advance, but I, I don't think there's any reason to think there'll be any regression next season. Uh, there's obviously a lot of hype and excitement about Michael Porter Jr. What are fair expectations for him this summer league? 
you know, he's entered a 54-win team where minutes were already at um, you know, a real premium. We had really good players who were unable to get into the playoff rotation. So while he's extremely talented and he's worked his tail off to hit summer league and he's so excited and the guy's chomping at the bit to play, um, you know, he, he, we're going to make him um, earn his spot in the rotation and that's going to be totally up to Mo and his staff. I don't think you see many 6'11 guys who are as fluid as he is. He's a natural shot maker. He grew up in a wonderful family. You know, seven siblings all likely to play Division One basketball. Mom and dad play, both play Division One basketball, so he has an acumen and an instinctual approach to the game that is rare. Um, but again, it, it's a competitive locker room. I don't think anyone's laying down, so, so um, Mike can take their minutes. We have internally high expectations for him, but it'll be great to see him out there competing. I'm sure it won't be pretty from jump. You don't play basketball for you know, better parts of his, uh, over a year, excuse me. Um, and it's going to be fun to watch, um, you know, him kind of jump into the team and finally be able to go full board. Uh, you just mentioned Mike Porter Jr. There's other good players that weren't in rotation in playoffs. So you can grow from within, certainly. What's your ideas of looking outside for um, talent? That's question one. The second question is, what should we expect next between this organization and Paul Millsap? Sure. Well, I'll go uh, second first. I mean, Paul, Paul is everything we'd hoped um, culturally. Um, his on court impact, I think, um, there's it, it's it's startling to see where we are defensively with him without Paul. His uh, in, instincts on that end of the court. Um, you know, our goal and Paul's goal is to have him back with us. And I think when both people have the same goal and they're um, they both have a lot of respect for each other. I'm pretty confident that will happen. Um, have dinner with Paul very soon. He's got a fantastic agent, D'Angelo. We'll catch up, but um, we, we both want the same thing. And um, you know, we'll figure out the, the best way for the organization and Paul to make sure that's achieved. So fully expect Paul to be back in a Nuggets uniform. You're always looking for additional talent. You know, you watch the playoffs now and say, wow, this guy, this guy can help us. Or um, you know, where are we most def uh, deficient in? Um, so I, I think. You know, the, well, the draft's an interesting opportunity for that. Well, we don't have a pick this year. Um, it, it's a great chance to be active with any potential trade chips you might have. We have some um, potentially useful trade player exceptions that come in handy. Um, I think we have a roster that's very well thought of league-wide. Um, so we'll be aggressive going into the draft, aggressive on draft night, and we'll see if that aggression leads to any deals. Tim, last offseason you signed Will Barton to a contract. He has the injury, obviously, kind of an up and down year. What did you make of his season? Yeah. Now, he'd never been injured before. I think he was, um, I think it impacted him, certainly physically, um, in, in his rush to get back on the court. And I think um, he, he was, he had a, a poor appreciation, and understandably so, because it was the first time going through it, what it's like to come back from surgery. So I, I expect him to be uh, uh, more resembling, more resembling of the guy that, um, He's been the first several years in the NBA. I think he is, um, you know, probably no one took the loss harder than Will. Um, he was such a competitive guy. So I, I think after a fully healthy offseason, really addressing some of the, you know, the physical deficiencies that comes with having a midseason surgery, I think he'll be back to form. So um, there wasn't that, it wasn't that long ago when we were wondering if Michael Malone was going to have a contract extension and now he's up for coaching the year. I guess, what did you see that you knew that he'd be the right man for this, this team? Um, I'm just a sooth there. Um, <laughs> no, it's, you see that their work that that staff puts in every day. It's it's. I've been forced to know Mo for a long, long time. Um, you, know, you guys all know the story. He used to recruit in Baltimore, and then I worked in the New Orleans. And I think, you know, control what you control. He's a, a definition of that. The work ethic, the preparation, um, the, the sense of humor, the ability to connect with guys. He does all those things at elite level. And I think what's also oftentimes overlooked with coaches. Say patience. Patience is with me as well. I, I think I like to think I'm better now than I was a couple years ago. Um, the pressure on these coaches, talking to you guys three times a day, um, 24 hour news cycle, social media, where the criticism is not just after a game, it's after one bad call, uh, play call. You know, people are calling for their heads. So uh, I'm not um, blind to that pressure. I think it's unfair pressure. Um, so I think the patience that's been shown to organizational why is we're reaping the rewards. Uh, Mo's a better coach than that only got here, and he's going to be a better coach next year than he was this year. Uh, he was fantastic, and I think certainly he should be coach of the year. Um, so, but it's just a day-to-day -day grind, and uh, not just Mo, but his entire staff. We've got a staff full of guys and be excellent head coaches when, when smart teams start calling. And you know, when you 
you know, you can live with the mistakes because they're informed mistakes and, and they're mistakes that are backed up with a ton of hard work and a ton of passion. Um, that coaching staff is certainly has all those things in place. No one works harder. The free agent market's always been difficult for, for Denver, um, especially for those top shelf, top tier athletes. Do you feel there's a change at all that, that some of those guys maybe are looking at Denver and even considering them? I think so. I think a couple years ago, we had, you know, we were able to get in front of some guys that we were surprised we got in front of. I think last year we had people um, quietly reaching out to people throughout the organization that, hey, you'd, you'd like to be here, that were kind of like, really? <laughs> Surprisingly so. Um, I don't know what else we can do. Uh, the city's dynamic. It's been, uh, you'd be hard pressed for anyone who visits Denver and, and who doesn't leave here thinking, wow, what a great city. I'd love to live there. Uh, the ownership group is the, is the most impactful and powerful ownership group in all sports. Uh, from London to LA, there's no one who has what the Cronkies have. And, and there's no there's no ownership group, I think, that is more hands-on and, and more knowledgeable of the who works for them I think, across every spectrum of the organization. And now the team success. Um, we have a 54-win team. Uh, there's only a couple teams that have more wins. Uh, we show we can win in the playoffs. We have the most unselfish superstar in the NBA with no contractual issues. No, we're not holding our breath over the next couple of years. There's no major decision that to be made in regards to Nicola. So um, if not, and I, and I think when people say it's about winning, if it's about winning, I don't know how we're not one, two, or three with a bullet. Um, if it's not, it's about growing your brand. Again, the, the unique uh, opportunities that Denver presents right now is being one of the hottest cities in the country, coupled with an ownership group that has stakes in any and everything um, uh, in entertainment. So I think it'll be fascinating when we make those calls and they say it's about winning. And if, if the answer is about winning, then they don't want to talk to us. And I think it's a disingenuous answer. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks Tim. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Tim.